The Earth's surface may appear stable, but it is constantly moving on a small scale. Most of this movement occurs regularly in response to tidal forces. In some places, there can be a subsidence of the land surface due to loss of groundwater or uplift due to tectonic forces. In volcanoes, ground movements can be very dynamic and the rise and fall of the volcano provides clues to what is happening beneath the surface. In some volcanoes, the deformation can be extreme. For example, Campi Flegrei in Italy can experience many meters of increase in a short time. There are records from that area, and in the Galpagos, and in other coastal volcanic areas, Deformation occurred so rapidly that fish were trapped as previously submerged areas rose above sea level. Deformation is less dramatic in Yellowstone. The ground does rise and fall but usually at a rate of a few centimeters, 1 to 2 inches per year. Leveling measurements collected between 1923 and 1977 show the calder arose by 72 centimeters, 28 inches but then subsided in the 1980s before lifting again in the 1990s. Based on geological studies of the terraces on the north side of Yellowstone Lake, it is clear that the caldera as a whole has shrunk by about 30 meters, 100 feet, over the last 14,000 years, since the end of the last ice age. Over the past two decades, monitoring of deformation in Yellowstone has been carried out using a satellite technique called NSAR, as well as continuous monitoring of Global Positioning System GPS stations. GPS is very useful because it provides data all year round, regardless of the season. NSAR cannot be used in winter because snow interferes with satellite signals. Since 2015, GPS data shows the Yellowstone caldera has been shrinking by about 2 to 3 centimeters, about 1 inch, every year. Subsidence occurred throughout the caldera, visible at stations on the east side, near the Mud Mountain area, and on the west side, near Old Faithful. However, land subsidence is unstable. Each summer is punctuated by lulls, or even small increases, 0.5 to 1 centimeter, or just a fraction of an inch. The lull in subsidence and slight uplift occurs at almost the same time each year, starting in May-June and lasting until September-October, and in some years more pronounced than others. What causes these seasonal signals? The answer becomes clear when plotting deformation data against river level. The seasonal lull in subsidence begins just as river levels begin to surge due to runoff from spring snowmelt. This runoff not only causes rivers to flow higher and faster, but it also recharges the groundwater system and the soil swells like a wet sponge. Groundwater is not the only cause of seasonal deformation in Yellowstone. There was also a visible signal near the shore of Yellowstone Lake. Thanks to all that runoff, the lake level rises quickly in the spring and then falls gradually over the summer lake level changes can reach 1.5 meters, 5 feet. The excess water adds weight to the surface and causes the soil to sink. Like putting a bowling ball on a mattress, GPS stations near the lake can see the weight of all this water. In spring, as the lake level rises, GPS stations near the lake shore show a drop in the ground level of up to 2 centimeters, less than an inch. But the lowering of the lake level will reverse as the lake level lowers, as the bowling ball slowly rises from the surface of the lake. Areas outside the caldera also experience some of these seasonal changes, although they are usually less dramatic, if you call a few centimeters of change dramatic. However, land subsidence is currently largely limited to the caldera. The area around the Norris Geyser Basin deforms independently of the caldera and has experienced episodes of uplift and subsidence over recent years, indicating water accumulated beneath the basin and was then released. Land movement in Yellowstone National Park is dynamic, 
changing from year to year, and even season to season. Although the subsidence of the caldera has been dominant since 2016, at some point it will increase again, as happened in 2004 to 2009 and 2014 to 2015. It's all part of the rise and fall of one of the largest magmatic and hydrothermal systems on Earth. 